Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go about defining chemistry. And in order to do this, we first have to start with the concept of matter. And what matter is, is matter is anything that has a mass and a volume. A mass is an amount of stuff, which is why the picture of the balance. And the volume is anything that occupies space, which is why the cube is there. It's a 3D space. Now, once we understand what matter is, is that anything that has mass or volume, we can then start to break down matter. And we're going to start off with the states of matter. And you should know three states of matter. There are actually four, but you should know three. The first of which is solids. And solids are particles that are packed tightly together. And what that means is that they're going to have a definite shape and a definite volume. They're not going to be able to change shapes uh, and you, you, their, their volume is not going to change. After solids, the next state of matter to talk about is liquids. And in liquids, what we have are particles that are in contact with one another, but they're free to move around. And what that means is that there is no definite shape. They take the shape of their container, but there is a definite volume. You can't compress a liquid. You can't take two liters of soda and put it in a one liter bottle. Okay. Uh, the third state of matter are gases. And gases have particles that are spread out and moving around at a very fast rate. There is no definite shape and there is no definite volume. They take the shape of the container and they are compressible. So gases are different than the others in that there is no different vo definite volume. And then finally we have plasma. And what plasma are is they're gas molecules that have an electrical charge. Examples of this are lightning, the sun is plasma, um, nuclear explosions are plasma. They're just gas particles, but they have electrical charges to them. Once we have the four states of matter down, we can then now start talking about classifying matter into different groups. And in order to do this, we're going to have to ask ourselves a, a couple of questions. The first question we're going to have to ask ourselves is, can it be separated? And if the answer to that question is yes, then what we have is a mixture. And a mixture is when we have two or more substances that we can physically separate in some way. So if the answer to the question is no, then we have what is known as a pure substance. So you cannot separate pure substances. You can separate mixtures. Now. If we look at the mixtures, what we want to ask ourselves, is it one phase? And what one phase means is that one layer, or can we see different parts to it? If it is one phase, then we have what is known as a homogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture would be something like salt water, where you take salt and water, you mix them together, and it looks like one substance, even though it's two or more substances that are mixed together. A heterogeneous mixture is something like oil and water. If you take oil and water and you mix them together, you're going to get two layers or two phases. Now, going back to the pure substance, we can ask ourselves, is it one type of atom or element? And if it's one type of element, then what we have are elements. Okay? Um, elements meaning that it's made up of just one thing. Okay, now, elements can exist as single atoms, or they can exist as multiple atoms as long as they're the same things. H2 is an element, hydrogen. Okay. If the answer is no, then we have what are known as compounds. Something like NH3, ammonia, is a compound. CO2, carbon dioxide, is a compound. It's more than one type of atom. Once we finish up with uh, the classifications of matter, we can start talking about the structure of matter. And the structure of matter comes down to atoms. It took scientists a long time to figure out what matter is made up of, but all matter is made up of atoms. And when we think about atoms, what we can do is we can actually start to think about the parts of an atom, okay, or the subatomic particles or subatomic matters that exist. These are the building blocks of the atom. Atoms are building blocks of all matter, but the subatomic matter are the building blocks of 
the atoms themselves. And there are some atomic particles or matter that have mass. And these ones that have mass are found in the nucleus. Okay, And the nucleus is a dense mass that's at the center of the atom and has a positive charge. The two particles or types of subatomic matter that are found in the nucleus are the protons, which are positively charged particles uh, that exist in the nucleus, and they have a mass of what is known as one atomic mass unit, or one AMU. Okay, And the protons determine the identity of the element. So I'm going to draw a picture, uh, an arrow here to a proton. We're going to say the protons are the red uh, particles in the nucleus. The other particle in the nucleus that has mass are the neutrons. And these are particles with no charge. They hold the nucleus together. They act as the glue to keep the protons from repelling one another. And they also have a mass of 1 AMU. So we're going to say the blue ones are the neutrons. Now, going back to subatomic matter, there are particles that have what we're going to say is negligible mass, or essentially no mass. And these are the electrons. And the electrons are negatively charged particles that exist on the outside of the atom. And they're the little dots in the pictures that you see up there. And they essentially have no mass. Okay, So um, there are three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The electrons are the ones with no mass. Okay. Once we identify the parts of matter, okay, the building blocks of matter, we can start talking about the properties of matter. And the properties of matter can be divided into two different categories, physical properties and chemical properties. And what physical properties are is they are properties that describe the appearance of the matter. Okay. They describe how matter looks. And there can be the physical properties can be divided into two categories, intensive properties and extensive properties. Intensive properties are properties that do not depend on the amount of matter. Examples include color, odor, density, texture, boiling point, melting point, state of matter. Doesn't matter how much is present, those are going to be the same. They're great for identifying the matter. Extensive physical properties are properties that do depend on the amount of material present. Okay, Properties like mass, length, width, um, and these properties, volume, Okay, these properties, height, do not, are not great for identifying the nature of the material because they could change as you change the amount of material. Okay? And then we have what are known as chemical properties. And chemical properties describe how matter reacts. Um, and these can only be observed by performing a chemical change. And we're going to talk about chemical changes in, in a second. But examples of this would be flammability. If something burns, if it rusts, is it toxic? Okay does it not react at all, which is known as inert. Those are property, uh, chemical properties, and they can only be observed by actually doing a chemical change, which brings us into the concept of changing matter, or it changes to matters. Um, and we can have two types of changes, physical changes and chemical changes. In a physical change, no new substance is formed. Think about ice becoming water, becoming gas. It's always H2O. It's just in a different form. That's a physical change. A chemical change is where a new substance is formed. Bonds are broken. Bonds are formed. So here are pictures of several different um, chemical change type reactions. And you'll see that the atoms are arranged diff differently in these chemical changes. In a physical change, they're arranged the same. So there are several indicators of chemical change that we want to look at. The, these are, will tell us that the chemical changes are happening. They are evolution of light, evolution of a gas, formation of a precipitate, a color change, an internal temperature change, or a change of odor. So when we ask ourselves, what is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of matter and how it changes.